Today, I'm working on this rather nice little traveling head shaper, which was built by Boynton and Plummer over in, over in the USA. There's a few pieces that need making on it and jobs that need doing before it can run properly. The major one being a new nut for this lead screw, which traverses the head side to side. So I'm gonna have a go at doing that over on my drumming today. So let's get right into it. The first step in machining a new nut is to square up a block close to the original size. The original is just rough cast, but starting with six parallel, square and flat sides is gonna make things a whole lot easier down the road. As you can see, operating the new shaper is very hard work. Once we have a square block, we can move on to the lathe and face one end. I need to machine a short diameter here because the position of the thread is critical relative to it. A hole will be drilled and tapped through the centre later on, so I drilled the centre hole at this stage so it can easily be relocated later. The diameter on the cast iron original is 731 foul plus a couple of tenths. So I'm aiming for the same on the new bronze one. I'm only using bronze because it's what I had and it'll do just as good a job, if not better. So this is the original nut in all its worn out glory and it's fitted to the underside of the saddle so the screw can move it side to side. The feature we just turned on the end of the blank locates into a bore under the saddle and then a screw comes in from above to fix it in place. In order to bore the thread in the right place on the blank, I need to know the distance from the underside of the saddle to the centre of the lead screw as accurately as possible. To do this, I bridge the ways with the parallel and then measure down from that to the top surface of the thread, which is 903 thousandths. All I have to do from here is minus the width of the parallel, 511, and then add half the diameter of the screw, 312.5, which gets me to the centre of it. Now I know exactly where the screw needs to land relative to this top feature. Now I can set my calipers to 704.5 thou and offer it up against the original part as a bit of an idiot check. With the calipers still set to 704.5 thou, I can scribe that distance onto the block from the surface I just machined on the lathe. I'm also scribing a centre line and whacking a punch mark in there where they cross. This is the centre of the thread. I'm using the old dead centre trick to get the punch mark concentric, starting by centering it by eye to the tool before bringing a DTI in onto the dead centre. When the DTI is reading little to no run out, then it means that our punch mark is bang on the middle of the lathe. With the mark now on centre, I can centre drill, drill and ream the bore to size. This bore needs to match the root diameter of the thread, which in this case is half an inch. With the basic machining out of the way, we can now get ready for thread cutting. I've set up my change wheels, so I have a 40 tooth wheel on the spindle and a 30 tooth wheel on the lead screw, which means for this lathe, I'm gonna get the desired pitch of six TPI. I first engage the tumble reverse in the right direction select an appropriate speed and engage the half nut. Because this lathe is reversible, I can leave the half nut engaged throughout the whole threading operation. After a scratch pass, we begin cutting the thread properly. It's always a good idea to verify the pitch with a gauge at this point. 
but you'll just have to trust me that I did that. At the end of the pass, I stop the lathe, retract the tool, reverse it back out, move the tool back in, apply a little more depth of cut, and make the next pass. I'm using the DTI to keep track of the cross slide movements. Here, you get a view of the shafting and belting that drives the lathe. When the cross belt is running on the drive pulley, the lathe runs forwards. When the open belt is on the drive pulley, the lathe runs in reverse. When neither is on, the lathe is stopped. You can see that the main shaft driver has to be quite wide in order to accommodate the side to side movement of both belts. There are two loose pulleys and one fixed or fast pulley between them. The loose pulleys are twice the width to accommodate the lateral movement and the shifter bar is connected to a hand lever below allowing the operator to easily shift the belts to where they need to be. Having said that, it's very possible to get in a muddle, and well, this happens. I'm sure you can imagine the missing audio. So that is unfortunately the end of that tool, and that part. But by the power of editing, I am back immediately with a new tool and a new part, already completed up until the point the last tool broke. The extra practice in tool making has obviously paid off because this new tool is actually performing much better. The rake and clearance angles are better, meaning there's less deflection and it's producing nicer swarf. I also slowed the lathe down a little to lower the stress levels a bit. You can also see I've managed to mar up the entrance of the thread a little with the body of the tool by not stopping quick enough. I didn't leave myself much clearance because I was worried about rigidity, but in hindsight a thicker tool with more stick out would have made things easier. But I'm plodding on anyway. After many, many, and I cannot stress this enough, many passes and what seemed like miles of thin bronze ribbon, it's time to do some test fits. First test fit. Nope.
the second test fit, it's thinking about it, but not happy. I double checked my measurements and all the numbers were fine, so I didn't want to remove any more material. I'm putting the ordinary turning tool back in to clean up the mess I made of the front, just in case this was influencing things. And then, something magical happened. I was super relieved to see the thread go in nicely, especially after all the cock-ups and the hours at the lathe. This is, after all, the third time lucky. Now the final operation to do is to drill and tap the hole in the top. It needs to be 5 16 UNC, so I'm drilling the tap size over on the bench drill. And then finally tapping to size and test fitting the original screw. It is a bit buggered, but it will still do its job. So unfortunately that's all I've got time for today. I'm really happy with how that turned out. As you can see it moves nicely side to side when I wind the handle here. Usually in operation it would have a, um, a ratchet and pull feed, much like the Redmond behind me. Um, a few things need tuning up still. The give needs fitting and the lock nuts at the end of the leaf screw need tightening properly. Uh, but I won't do that until I've got it perfect because I'll probably have to take it all apart again. Obviously the ram slides backwards and forwards like this when it's in use and there'd be gearing here and a crank. Uh, there's a job to do on the shaft over here where there's supposed to be a cone pulley so it can be belt driven. There's also a flywheel with a hand crank so you can hand crank this as well. Um, so that will be coming up on future videos and I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, hit the like button, leave a comment, it all really helps and I'll see you on the next one.